Hi, Matt. Welcome back to Portland, buddy. Man, I'm so glad to be back here in Portland. Do you remember the here. last time you were here? Uh, I do remember the last time I was here because I remember this is one of the this is the best place to play music at a radio station that there is. So. <laughs> Other people don't realize this. Oftentimes, when somebody comes to a radio station, you're playing at their conference room or at their dining room. Oh table. yeah, the yeah. first time you go through to like meet people, we're like, who's this? Who's this guy with his guitar and his song about you know <laughs> trucks or whatever? <laughs> and then you go into a conference room and you try to play a song about a girl in a truck that's better than the last guy that was just in there doing that, or yeah. at least as good. And uh, this is way, way better place to play songs about trucks and girls. That's, well, that's why we always tell everybody, like, if you're going to do a show, you either need to start here or finish here, which you, took, you paid attention. It's the last show of the year. Exactly. Yeah. 1,000%. Because if you start here and then you go see all those little small conference rooms, you're like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, the, this bar is too high. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Speaking of high, you're a, you're a big man. How tall are you? 6'5"? Well, no. With boots on. With, six seven. With boots on, I'm probably between six eight and six nine. I'm six seven. Yeah. Wow. That's I know. I, yeah, I know. It's like, why? <laughs> you know, I used to get buckets. Okay. I mean, I still can. You know, if you if your city league team, you need somebody to rebound at a high rate, make a good pass. You know, talk some shit, trash. Sorry. Uh, but now it's just like hard to travel. Like I get in an airplane and I just have to fold up like one of those bikes that fit in a in a. <laughs> In a trunk, you it's know? an excessive amount. So I can take my front wheel off, you know. Right, right. But yeah, so can, it's not as handy anymore. You can reach the top shelf, but you know anybody my size can do it. You know, yeah. it's excessive amount of height. It's it's just like a little aggressive on my height at this point. <laughs> right. I wish I could give some of it back to somebody who could use it now. You know, get getting some buckets. But the good thing about it all was is that you went to college on an athletic program to play basketball. Man, I did. Yeah, I, that was my first dream, and um. Not to get too after school specially on you over here, but uh, that was my first dream, and I thought, man, okay, I'm gonna play ball. I'm a I'm a basketball player. I'm an athlete. I'm a hooper. <laughs> so that was that was me. And then I got to um, like AAU and and college too. You know, still had my dreams or whatever, and I got there. And then I played against some people that played basketball for a living for a lot of years, and. <laughs> I learned that I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> like, I, I, I could be playing, I could be in, like, Serbia right now, maybe. Uh, best case scenario. But uh, but you follow your dreams because one dream will lead to another. Yes. And uh, it wouldn't, if it wasn't for playing basketball, man, we would play during, like, Basketball's a winter sport. You're on campus all winter break. You don't go home. I got one year, I got 36 hours off for Christmas. I had to be back Christmas Eve. And, but you have a lot of time to kill because there's no classes. Nobody else is on campus. So I sat just like this in front of a computer with a guitar. Uh, and that's how I learned to play. And that's how I started writing songs. And one dream led to another dream. And this is no kidding. This is living a dream right now, playing a, playing a show in a, in a faraway land that's filled up with people that are mouthing the words. So That's awesome. Yeah. I would think like the discipline of being an athlete probably translates a little bit to being on the road, right? I mean, a, it's, it's uh, arduous out here. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's like you're out here was nodding along. Saying, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's a team sport, man. What we do. I mean, we spend more time together than we do with anybody else. Right. I mean, we've played, we played something close to 200 shows this year, and and wow. we live on a you know on a bus that that's like looks big from the outside until you live on it, and, and then, then it's, it's a different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that translates for sure. It's a team sport. Hundred percent. When you you grew up in Arkansas, mm -hmm. you're a mama's boy. Your mom yeah. is your biggest fan. I love your mom. I love watching her. She's, she's you've done a ton of things with our very own Bobby Bones. I've, yeah. I've watched this stuff with your mom. Yeah. I love the story that she was a barrel racer in her region of Arkansas. She was the number one barrel racer. Was. Pretty cool, she right? Is she is right right now. Okay, cool. <laughs> I love it. As of, as of yeah, she just got a belt buckle I could eat Thanksgiving supper off of. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's a G. I'm so telling you, famous people in Arkansas is like Bobby. Your mom, and then you down here. Yeah, yeah Justin, Bobby. Justin's down my here. My mom, yeah. Justin Moore. Yeah. That's not nice, Danny. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it wasn't a short me, joke Mary thing. Steenburgen, and then me. <laughs> yeah, because everyone loves your mom. I I remember the day that she came in with Bobby. Yeah. Um, 
I watched the videos with her, and it was just hysterical because they were more into your mom than they were you. She's which was more great. interesting than me. Yeah, <laughs> she got most of her of a doctorate done as a single mom, and she barrel races, and she like started a business that she like sold, and like like she just better than me. And how many of your like twenty million views on YouTube are her? Like I don't I don't don't know but a lot of them yeah, right. like probably yeah, a lot probably a lot yeah that's funny the best thing you want to do I took mom to the CMAs this year nice. and yeah it was she she always wanted to do that and I got to go so I took mom but honestly it's the it's the best thing you can do because you go to this red carpet right and it's just like interview after interview after interview after interview there's like forty of them and if your mom is there. They'll talk to her and she'll say a bunch of awesome stuff about you. <laughs> and you don't have to like talk about yourself. It's kind of like putting your mom as a reference on your resume a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but it's cool if you do it there. So, well, pro tip. So, you took her to the CMAs, yeah. but your Grand Ole Opry debut was awesome because yeah. you had 400 tickets for family and friends. Yeah. And I love the fact that your local mail carrier came to the show that night to support you. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to understand. Like you know, you look back and look. We've done some awesome stuff. The boys and I, we we proud of them. That night at the Opry, man, the first time that we played there, I'm from a town of 300 people, and 400 people showed up. And I've had family from <laughs> Texas, and had family from you know all over, uh, and then everybody from town. I don't I don't know if there was a light like a light left on in in town. Um, and they that came and they said, yeah, it was a big deal, man. A lot of people that haven't left Conway County, Arkansas in decades and probably won't ever again made a trip to the Grand Ole Opry house. And that was a big deal. That's that cool. explains this crowd here. How many people with the last name Stell in the room? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everybody exactly. tonight. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I love it. Matt, the, <laughs> the other thing that I, I love about you is that um, you like to give back too. And you went to Haiti one time and you decided you want to do something different. And then you decided that I think I want to try and get into the medical program. And you went to... Uh, like a part-time Harvard school for pre-med stuff. So I'm like, you're one what? talented man. I mean, this is not, ex <laughs> no. Like, kind of, I got accepted into a into a program that, yeah. But I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you were almost great at a number of things. Yeah, man. I was, all, but the best part about almost going and getting accepted is that had I showed up, I would have failed out. Like, I would, I would have not been able to do it i don't think and really i'd moved to town to write songs i've been to town a couple years and hadn't had the opportunity that i want i thought well maybe i'm you know play music because i love it but it ain't gonna be my job what else would i do went on that trip worked alongside a bunch of doctors and stuff and i was like man if i was ever gonna do anything it would be this and i was like well cool how about you know seven more years of school and uh so i got i don't know the admission lady was super hung over on a monday morning and let me in <laughs> <laughs> but I, it's my work in theory. Well, um, roll with it because it sounds great. Yeah, it's but I well, would, man. yeah, yeah. Just between us, I would have failed out. Oh, I would fine. not have done it. <laughs> okay, two more questions. Um, obviously, you're writing your own music. I mean, you know, look at, you got two number ones underneath your belt. You're now two times platinum with Prayed For You. It's awesome. Uh, who is the ultimate dream duet partner as a female you would like to work with? Um, I'll probably have to go with, uh, who the, the, one of the two females in my top five, like wrapped of the year, uh, like most listened to records of Taylor Swift. Okay. Like I love Taylor Swift, but then I love like Sturgill Simpson was also in my like top. And so was Eric Church. And like, I, I just like a lot. I'm like everybody else, like a lot of music. So it'd probably be, probably be Taylor Swift. I would think. Or, yeah, do it. Take or, her to the CMAs next year. Yeah, or maybe Danielle Bradbury, me and her buddies. And, oh, that'd be uh, good. Yeah, she's awesome, man. She's one of my favorite voices. She is a different type of artist. When she did uh, Shallow with Parker McCollum, and I heard that for the first time, I was like, whoa, she's yeah. on a different level. So that, that would be a yeah, great man. combo, the two of you together. Agreed. Do you yeah. have a right aiming for that kind of thing or anything? What's that? Do you have a right aiming for that? Sometimes, yeah. Like, Tennille Arts and I put a, something on her project uh, that was that was a fun collab that, that we wrote. And yeah, for sure, man. It, it's always fun to do different stuff, especially when you write. That's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, want to hear some more music from Matt Stell? Give it up. Here he comes. Yeah.